Hello, and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video we are going to start looking at the Dark Steel set, uh, I'm going to start off by looking at Master Blaster, uh, which is just a pure red deck. Uh, so let's start looking at the deck list. So we have 20 creatures, 6 instants, 3 sorceries, 7 artifacts, 24 land, we got mana curve off to the side there. So. Let's start looking at some of the creatures. So a lot of artifact creatures in this deck. Um, I think I was actually really confused when I started looking at this deck because uh, I don't remember this at all. I don't remember any of the Dark Steel theme decks. Um, I remember all the Mirrodin ones because I think I got all. I bought all of them at the time. Um, Dark Steel, I think, just completely passed me by. I really didn't pay much attention to it. Um, but yeah, so I think the theme of the deck is meant to be. It's just kind of like red mid range. That's the and it has a minor kind of sacrifice theme just because that's what red does in Mirrodin block, um, but yeah, let's uh, let's start looking at these cards properly. So we have two Dusk Workers, um, which is such a weirdly like unique card. So four mana for a two two. Uh, whenever it becomes blocked, it automatically regenerates, which is like. It's a super weird ability. I can't think of another card that does that. Um, and it has uh, like a shade ability, so three colors to give it a plus one, plus naught until end of turn. Um, kind of, a, I mean, a super weird creature just in terms of like art and, and text and everything. I'm not really sure what to think about it. Um, other than, you know, like I don't think it's maybe too efficient. Um, but, you know, I guess would, you know, opponent, would they waste time blocking it because it is only two power and if it does become blocked it's not going to die so yeah i don't know maybe it has like a very weird like <laughs> kind of like well don't block me because there's no point kind of uh kind of thing and then if they don't block then it can pump itself up i guess i guess i'm trying to make a case for dusk worker here uh two hematite golems uh so four mana for one four and it has pump ability uh one cards one red to give itself plus two plus naught on turn uh yeah i think that's I think that's kind of fine. It's a little boring, but I think it's fine. Uh, and then three Oxida Golems. So this was a cycling dark seal of these golems that had affinity for basic lands. Um, affinity being an incredibly broken ability uh, in the in the previous set in Norm Mirrodin because it was affinity for artifacts, and you're in a set that is where a lot of the cards are artifacts. So affinity just means it costs one less for every. Uh, for every permanent of the uh, type that it has affinity for. So ideally you could play this turn three. And like turn three, 3-2 uh, three, haste is not awful at all. Um, you know, and potentially, you know, like later turns it's, you know, much che it's cheaper or perhaps even free, which is, yeah, that's not dreadful. Um, yeah, it's just, it's okay. It's okay, I think, Oxford Golem. Uh, and then a single goblin replica, three mana for a two two, um, three colors and a red. Sacrifice it, destroy an artifact. Um, it's an exp it's, it's an expensive uh activation cost, but um, you know, you bear in mind, you know, so much of the so much of the set, so much of the you know, if you were playing at the time, a lot of the cards in the meta at the time would have been artifacts. So, I think justified in being a little expensive, but yeah, it's fine, fine. And I really like the art. It's kind of creepy robot goblin. It's great. Uh, and then some red creatures. So, uh, Krark Clan Grunt, which I have to pronounce very carefully because, as I discovered in the last video where uh, this was in the deck, it's uh, it's quite a tongue twister to say. Um, sacrifice an artifact, gets plus one, plus naught, and gains first strike to under ten. So, uh, in the Sacrificial Bam deck, because it was in there, I said, you know, that's quite a weak weak ability. And I've, I've reconsidered that, I think. Um, sacrifice an artifact to get plus one, plus naught, get first strike. Bumps up to three two, like three power on three power and first strike is it you know, that's kind of a little scary. Honestly. Like that would have that would have threatened, I think, quite a bit at the time. Um either 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 when it was blocking or when it was attacking, you know. And the fact the only activation cost is to sacrifice an artifact doesn't require any mana, so you could potentially just do it, you know, out of nowhere. Well not an out of nowhere, you need an artifact. But yeah, you know what? Um, not, you know, okay. Crark Clan, Crark Clan Grunt is, is okay. It's okay. I really hope he's not in any more decks. I really don't want to try saying the name anymore. Uh, three Crark Clan Stokers. Um, so three mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Tap, sacrifice, and artifact. Uh, get double red into your mana pool. Yeah, fine. Um, you know, this kind of like ritual effect. This is the sort of the time in the game when that's definitely moving over to red. These kind of 
spells and abilities that um that give you like a, a temporary boost of mana this is that's definitely where it's starting to happen uh yeah i think that's perfectly fine um you don't have as many artifacts um in here to sacrifice i guess then um, maybe the sacrificial bam deck but you've you've got a few ways i don't think there's a pest engine in here which is which is the premier way of getting disposable artifacts uh, Rustmouth Ogre, 6 mana for a 5-4. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you can destroy an artifact that player controls. Yep, perfectly fine. I think 6 mana is perfectly fine for that kind of size, like 5-4. Like, perfectly good and chunky. You know, doesn't have a horrible drawback. And, um, yeah, gets to destroy artifacts. Yeah, I think it's alright. Oh, if you had Trample, that would be perfect. But, um, yeah. Can't have can't have nice things, I suppose. Uh, and then two Volshock Warbores. Uh, so four mana for a five five. Uh, when it comes into play, you have to sacrifice it unless you sacrifice an artifact. Um, I'm not really sure that it's worth sacrificing an artifact just to get a five five for four. Um, you, I, I kind of would want it to have like haste or trample or or just something else. But just being a vanilla five five is kind of not okay. And I, I don't know why it's uncommon. It has, I don't know. It has no business being uncommon in my eyes. But it's fine. I guess it's fine. It's still it's still decently, uh, decently costed for its size. I suppose at the time, and it's in red where red isn't getting as efficient creatures. And it's fine. I guess. So one of the rares of the deck is Gemini Engine. Uh, so six mana for three four. Uh, this is so. This is the thing about Mirrodin Block is that like so many rares are like really goofy and weird. Um, there's so many weird artifacts, um, which is great. Uh, so this guy is yeah. I said six mana for three four. Whenever it attacks, it creates a attacking twin artifact creature token, which with power and toughness equal to Gemini Engines, and then the t token is sacrificed at end of combat. So it attacks, splits into two, you got two attackers, it's fine. Um, I suppose actually in a way this does create a uh, token artifact that then you've got other effects that can then uh, sacrifice it, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, I think Gemini Engine's alright. Never played with or against it, I don't think I've ever seen this card be played, but I mean it looks kind of fun, I suppose. Uh, you know, obviously if you can find ways to improve Gemini Engine's uh, power and toughness, then obviously the twin will be stronger as well. Anyway. Uh, two Iron Mers, yep, just two mana, two mana for a 1-1, one, one. taps to give you red, yep, fine, become sacrifice fodder later on in the game. Two Steel Walls, yep, perfect, yep, one mana, Defender, 0-4, yep, Steel Wall is great, I like Steel Wall. Now, two Dark Steel Brutes, so, Indestructible, so this is the first set where Indestructible shows up, and it was the whole thing because... Uh, it was the, that was the gimmick of Dark Steel. It's just like, oh, some of these artifacts are made from Dark Steel, which is indestructible. Um, which is, yeah, at the time was like, whoa, that's really crazy. I mean, indestructible now is like whatever. It's like common. Um, but yeah, at the time, there was, it was this was kind of a big deal. Uh, so Dark Steel Brutes is, is two mana artifacts, indestructible. And you pay three, and it becomes a two two artifact creature in turn to turn. I believe it becomes a beast uh, in the Oracle text. But yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It serves as a really good blocker. Uh, then a bunch of burn. So we've got two barbed lightning, three mana. Uh, choose one. It either does three damage to a creature or three damage to a player, and you can entwine it for two, which means you get to do both. Um, three mana to do three damage is kind of like a bad deal, honestly. Um, five mana to do three damage to a creature and a player is, I think that's okay. Um, it is obviously pricey, but I think you're paying for the flexibility here, but yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, two electrostatic bolts, uh, single red mana, does two damage to a creature. If it's an artifact creature, does four damage instead. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It's just kind of like shock with some upsides and some downsides, isn't it? Yeah, fine. Uh, one, grab the reins. So... Four mana, instant. Uh, it's another entwined one. So choose one. Until end turn, you gain control of target creature and it gains haste. Uh, or sacrifice creature, then grab the reins, does damage equal to that uh, creature's power equal to, to target creature or player. So, you know, if you have seven mana, you could obviously steal something from your opponent and then sacrifice it, do the damage, which is, you know, that's not terrible. You're getting rid of one of their threats and also doing damage back to them. Uh, the fact this is like a act of treason effect at... Instant speed is actually pretty interesting. Um, yeah, it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't untap the creature that you uh, gain control of. So it's not like um, if they're attacking, you can't grab it mid combat and then use it as a blocker, which is unfortunate. Um, 
But yeah, I think Grab the Reins is okay. Uh, both those modes are pretty good. And at seven mana, I think that would have been quite a swingy thing to steal something and then throw it back at an opponent. Yeah. Uh, so the other rare of the deck is Pulse of the Forge. So this is a whole cycle in Dark Seal, these pulses. Um, generally, I think they're all actually pretty weak. Um, I think Pulse of the Forge is probably the better one of the of the whole cycle. So what's three mana? Um, Pulse the Forge does four damage to a player, and then if that player has more life than you, get Pulse the Forge back to your hand. Um, so all the pulses do, they do something, and then basically if you're doing worse than your opponent in a certain way, you, you get it back and you can do it again. But yeah, I think Pulse the Forge is the best one. Um, the white one is obviously gains you life because of course it does. Um, but yeah, I think this is okay. And even that, again, like, uh, three mana for four damage to a player at instant speed. Again, not, not dreadful. Not dreadful. And the fact you need to potentially get it back is, is good. Yeah, um, you, you know, ideally want to get maybe two castings out of this. Anyway, yeah, Pulse the Forge is fine. Um, then we have a single Detonate, uh, X and red. Destroy target artifact with converted mana cost X. It can't be regenerated. And then it deals X damage to that artifact's controller. Um, yeah, really good artifact destruction spell there. Um, that's pretty good. Um, the fact that this can destroy artifact lands for only a single red mana is really good. Um, yeah, I just think it's good. And uh, I think you want to get at least maybe like X is three out of this to uh, to really you know to really get maximum value out of it. Yeah, I think detonate's pretty good. Uh, fireball, the classic fireball that got reprinted. Uh, so one red matter and X does X damage divided evenly, rounded down amongst any number of target creatures or players. As additional cost to play fireball, pay one for every target beyond the first. I have never liked fireball, um, just because I've always been super underwhelmed by it. Because you think like, oh yeah, great, I'll pour a lo load of mana into it, and um, yeah, oh, I could do loads of damage to um, you know lots of different targets. But it requires so much mana to be able to do that because. Yeah, you know, like, okay, so say you want to hit two creatures for two damage with this. Um, you've got to spend like six mana to do that, and it's just it's just very inefficient. Most of the time, fireball is just blaze. It might as well just be blaze because you want to do just X damage to a single thing. I just yeah, I've I've never liked fireball, um, just because like its wording is so weird and oh, I just don't like it. But you know, in this you know, if it's just an X spell, that's fine. Uh, and then a single Molten Rain, 3 mana, destroy type land, if it was a non-basic land, does 2 damage to that land's controller. That's that's really mean. <laughs> like, I so say, if you're playing these um, theme decks against each other kind of out of the box, um, obviously this affects um, the artifact lands, but I wonder if this ever got some use in kind of like extended formats where, you know, non-basic lands are the norm. That would be, that'd be interesting to know. Uh, and then two Pyrite Spell Bombs. I think this is uh, probably the joint best spell bomb along with the blue one uh so one mana artifact one red sack it does it does shock which is great and you can if you don't want to do shock you can sacrifice a draw card which is is great uh we have single granite shard so three mana uh artifact uh three and tap or red and tap does one damage to a creature or player yep it's kind of like prodigal sorcerer but as an artifact perfect um yeah i think that's perfectly fine uh town of pain this is like again one of the weird mirrored and block artifacts. So four mana artifact. Whenever a source you control other than Talon of Pain deals damage to an opponent, you put a charge counter on Talon of Pain. X tap remove X charge counters from Talon of Pain and it does X damage to target creature or player. So this is really fun. I think that um you know you could build up counters on this as you're doing damage with burn spells or attacking with creatures. Um and then this you've got this kind of building up as a kind of a finisher if you need to do the last say like three or four points of damage. Um yeah, I think Town of Pain is pretty good. Three Goat Furnace, it's just the red artifact land. Yep. Yep, it's fine. Gives you a you know a sacrifice outlet for some things that care about sacrificing. Uh three Dark Steel Citadel, so this was the new artifact land uh introduced in dark steel it's just gives you colorless and it's indestructible which is yeah perfectly fine and you know affinity decks were like oh great now i can have seat of the synod and vault of whispers and now dark steel citadel hooray <laughs> more artifact land to make my affinity deck even more broken uh so what could have been so overall i think it's um it's like an okay deck it's just uh you know it feels a little directionless it's just kind of red mid-range isn't it it's just uh 
yeah, that's that's all really is. So there's kind of like a lot of options I think that could have gone in here. Um, so at the top we've got Fist of the Anvil, Seething Song, Spike Shot Goblin. Those are all from Mirrodin. Fist of the Anvil is just like a buff spell. Seething Song is a way to power out some fast mana, and Spike Shot Goblin is like a another like ping creature. Uh, but down at the bottom we've got some options here from Dark Steel, which I think could have fit here. So Arcbound Bruiser, uh, is one of these Arcbound creatures. There's a whole deck about these, so we'll be looking at these in a lot more detail later. Uh, but it's five mana essentially a 3-3 three, three, and when it dies you put its um, plus one plus one counters on another artifact creature which is super fun as we'll see when we look at the deck which is full of arc bound creatures uh, Chimeric Egg I used to really like this card. I think um, each thing is pretty good. So whenever an opponent plays a non-artifact spell, you put a charge counter on it, you can take three charge counters off it, and it becomes a 6-6 six, six with Trample, which is pretty fun, right? Uh, Thunderstaff, I think, is pretty could have fit in here as well. Three mana. Um, basically, if Thunderstaff is untapped, you, um, you prevent one damage from... Uh, combat damage from attacking creatures, and you can play two tap and basically switch it into attack mode where you give your attacking creatures plus one, plus one, turn, turn. Would have been okay. Um, and also would have been nice maybe to have uh, maybe like one or two Volshock Morning Stars. Um, it's just like the bigger Leonin Scimitar. It's like literally double in every way, like double the cost, double the bonuses, double the equipped cost. I think that could have just fit in well in here. Just maybe even just one, just to whack on a creature. Like it would have gone nicely on the Gemini engine, I think. So in summary, yeah, I think this one's, I think it's all right, honestly. Um, I don't, again, I don't think it's doing anything too exciting. It's obviously here just to kind of show off maybe like the new indestructible cards of which honestly there's few. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's all right. Uh, just kind of red mid range is not a deck we usually see. Um, so yeah, in, in that regard, it's kind of interesting and it's, it's showing off some interesting cards. So overall, I think it's all right. But what did you think after seeing the deck? Did you have it and did you play with it? Did you make any changes to it? Uh, stick a comment below. I'd really like to hear what you think. Uh, but I'll be back next time to look another Darksteel deck. But until then, thank you for watching and listening and have a great day.